Side imaging is the most efficient tool for learning a new body of water quickly. It is going to show you structure underneath the water and it is going to allow you to read the bottom and your underwater eyes are going to reveal structures that you never knew were there. It is an absolutely awesome tool and one that you need to take advantage of if you are going to maximize your time on the water and catch some of those offshore fish that other people are not catching. You are going to learn to read and interpret your side imaging screen in this video and you will be able to use your side imaging more efficiently on the water so let's get to it and I hope you like it and if you do a like share subscribe is always appreciated. Always remember in side imaging that your side imaging beam that is coming out from the left side of the transducer and the right side of the transducer cannot shoot through solid objects. So therefore you're going to get shadows and shadows are absolutely key in seeing how high structures are off the bottom and seeing shadows of fish. Just they give you so many clues as to what the picture is. So bear that in mind as we go through the video. One of the best ways to learn about your Humminbird units is to put it in simulation mode. So I've just fired up the unit and I'm waiting for the menu to appear message. And there it is. So I hit menu and I go from normal down to simulator and then I press exit and then I'm going to let it fire up and it is now showing me something that is radar and some auto chart and simulation goes through all the specific stuff for different things to give you an overview but i want site imaging that's what i'm interested in learning here so i'm going to hit and hold my view button and i'm going to see my sonar menu comes up and i'm going to right cursor and i'm going to go down cursor to to side imaging view and i hit it and there it is. So now I can play in this side imaging mode. So one of the easiest things to do, for example, is if I want to see what different frequencies look like, I can hit my check mark. So I look at that one and down here it's at 405 to 505 kilohertz and I can get an idea of what the picture looks like there. So let's see what it is in the 800 kilohertz range. Well, now I'm 780 to 840 kilohertz, and I can see the difference in the picture. And there is different times when I want to use different frequencies. If I want to see a big, wide range feature, I would probably go down to the lower frequencies. And if I want to get the clearest picture, I'm going to hit my check mark again. And now you can see in the bottom that I am at 1.050 to 1.175 millihertz and I'm in the mega frequency. So that is how you can vary the frequencies and that's one example of what you can do in simulation mode. Quick correction that it is megahertz not millihertz. We're going to start the video off with learning how to interpret things in simulation mode. Then I am going to show you a bunch of on the water images that I have taken that will help you learn to understand what you're seeing, including fish. I know people are always asking, where's the fish? Well, there's lots of fish in the images that I'm going to show you and even in the simulation mode. So you will get an understanding of what to look for. The video is also going to show you the side imaging feature of the Mega 360, which is absolutely awesome. And I'm a huge fan of it. And once that is done, I am going to go over some of my settings because I know that is a common question. Well, what are your settings to get such good images? So we'll cover that as well. Let's start the analyzation in simulation mode. So let's do some basic things first. Up here, you have the position of the boat. This is the real time reading. Down here, this stuff is in the past. This is to the left of the boat and it is set at 80 feet left. Each line is 20 feet, 40 feet, 60 feet. Similarly, on the other side, you have 80 feet. 
you can see here that there is a huge hump here and it looks like it has some big slab pieces of rock with smaller pieces of gravel over here. You've got a structure here that has some shadows underneath it. You have a transi trans sorry, transition zone here where you have soft bottom, pretty featureless, and then you got some big boulders right here and some smaller boulders, some smaller boulders in here. And you can see the depth is at 28 feet and that's because there's a hump here. And now that it, the boat position is again here, it's gonna drop down quickly to 40 feet. You got a really nice school of fish right here. And those are indicated by the white marks and you've got lots of bait fish around. You have some kind of trestle bridge-like system here. You can see the shadow of it underneath. Looks like some cross supports here. Looks like another smaller trestle over here. There's tons on simulation mode and it's there for a reason. They want you to learn about the product and it's a great way to play. Once again, we have another transition zone over here where there's kind of a featureless bottom. You're getting into the gravel, you see the hump, and again, lots of bait fish. There's tons of information here. Over here, you got a little softer bottom to a little harder bottom. It's just a matter of practice and getting used to using your electronics. So just take the time and play with it when you can and you will get much better interpreting. Side imaging helped me discover this huge rock pile to the right of the boat. Here's a nice hard bottom area with gravel and boulders. This is a nice rock pile on the right side of the image. Notice that there are some boulders on the left side of this hard bottom area. The boat is going through weeds. You can see a log to the left and up near the top a weed point. The side imaging shows weed pockets just to the left as the weed bed starts. The hump at the cursor to the left cannot be seen without side imaging. The large shadow to the left shows that it is a significant rock hump. The image to the right was found in the Niagara River near a bridge. Any guesses? Looks like a boat in the image at the bottom right, but the shadow's on the left. Interesting. Your thoughts? The dock is obvious, but what intrigues me are the scattered rock piles around the dock. Check out the fish circled in blue near the pilings. The sand dunes to the right of the boat were taken in Lake Erie in 48 feet of water. The dark soft bottom patch also in 48 feet of water in Lake Erie is quite interesting to me. Dredged or possibly the keel of a ship in that deep water? The large ridge here is like the opposite of the dredged photo. Lots of fish sitting off this rocky bank, circled in blue. This is a really cool looking structure with fish nearby. The boat is sitting still, non-mega, lower frequency, yet still showing fish. Here are some fish just under the boat as I went past. There's a large group of fish in the box, approximately 50 to 100 feet away from the boat. When fish are hugging the bottom tightly, you have to look close to see them. There's a small group of fish located near the bottom of this ledge. Shadows tell you a lot about the shape, size fish, and how far off the bottom they are. The two arrows show the shadows of the fish that are suspended in the water column. Interesting, there's lots of fish around those suspended cables. Large blocks and cables are often used to suspend floating man-made structures. The long slender images and shadows reveal three pike to the left side of the image. Sometimes fish are more challenging to see. Do you see them? I love the side imaging feature on my Mega360 as it is independent from the movement of the trolling motor. Here's the beginnings of an underwater point. And once again, I am finding this with the side imaging. You can see the shadow in behind it to the right of the boat. And it is a nice small spot. And you can see we're getting a little bit deeper and we're just gonna cruise by. 
Once again, I want you to keep in mind that your side imaging works best when moving. Your images are not nearly as clear as when you are sitting still. So again, keep the boat moving that two to five miles per hour. And you can see that there is a shadow behind this hump. There is deep water behind it. And you can see the harder bottom area coming up to the right. It's definitely lighter there. And this is very different from anything in this particular lake. So your Mega 360 side imaging does a great job of showing you a variety of structure. And once again, it is in that fixed position, not attached to the trolling motor, which is key. Hopefully at this point of the video, you are now understanding the side imaging pictures much better and you are excited about it and you want to learn the settings. So here we go. Let's take a look at our settings. Always make sure that in your setup tab, so we are up here in the toolbar and in the setup tab, we always want to go down to the user mode and we want to make sure it's in custom. If I go down to it and I go into angler mode, I am going to lose some of the features that are available to me. So always make sure you change it from angler to custom. And it's as simple as that. And now you're going to have the most available features on your unit. First of all, in order to get to our settings, we are going to hit the Side Imaging Express menu by hitting the menu button once. And the menu button once is going to reveal our features. And with any sonar, the two main things that you're going to adjust are going to be your sensitivity and your contrast. Generally, in clearer water, you are going to increase the sensitivity and in dirtier water you are going to decrease the sensitivity. Now that we have our menu up, let's take a look and let's let's play. That's how you learn is by playing with these units. Once again, you're in simulation mode, you're not doing any damage to the unit by leaving the sonar on, so just have at it and play away. So, I said sensitivity is something that you want to adjust. I could go up to the top here and I can adjust it here, but I generally choose to not do that. So I generally choose to go to SI Enhance and you can see down at the bottom that my sensitivity is there. And really, to be honest with you, I don't change the factory settings a lot. I will adjust them. I mean, they make the factory settings so that they are good images for people to see and not have to spend so much time playing with the units. But like most of us, we want the best possible images, so we play and we tinker. I like to use the analogy that your settings are like an adjustable wrench, which is a great tool, but you have to change it for every job. So if I am fishing a murky, dirty body of water, I'm going to use different settings that if I'm fishing a really clear lake that, you know, I'm going to adjust things differently. And sometimes even on a given lake, for example, Lake St. Clair, you know, it can be crystal clear, but it also, if you have some wind, it can get dirty because of the wind stirring up the bottom. So you will have to play with the adjustments. So don't use that set it and forget it mentality because it is not going to give you the best images. Let's play. So I am going to start playing with the sensitivity. And as I go up, you can see that it's getting brighter and brighter. And when I look at that, maybe you like that image and maybe you don't but I might start backing it off and saying, well, what looks the clearest to me? And then if I keep going down all the way, you can see it's getting darker and darker. And I really, you know, don't like that, but hey, you know, different strokes for different folks. So once again, I just play with it and change it. And let's go back to roughly where it was at 10 at the factory settings. And sometimes some people like to bump it up a little bit more. And I think that's pretty good there. Let's go down to contrast. Let's see what that does. 
All right, once again, going up, it's getting darker. I don't like that. But again, it is showing over here the harder bottom areas. So if I'm looking for harder bottom areas, maybe I want to fire up the contrast. Who knows? Let's back it off. And let's see. Now you can see we're getting a really hazy, washed out picture. That's awful. And don't want that. Well, let's bring it back to roughly where it was. And, you know, just play with it till you get to where you like it. And let's say that, you know, you like it there, a little, a little dark. So I back it off and, all right, let's stay there. So let's see what the next one is. Sharpness. Low. Medium. High. And that re really is fuzzy and grainy to me. So I don't like that. That's medium. That's yeah, still pretty grainy. And the sharpness off back on low and I definitely like it off some people don't like the water column underneath the boat so you can go down to contour mode turn that off and you can see that now there is no water column underneath the boat but that's confusing to me so I like to leave that off and that makes it much easier for me to interpret one of the features that I do constantly play with, though, is the range. So going down to the range here, once again, we're just playing, and I am increasing the range, and now I can see some things further out than what they were before. And, you know, I can go out and just do that. And I could even try and change the frequency. And you can see it's a darker picture. Change the frequency again. It's a little lighter and a little darker. So maybe in that case, the 800 was the brightest at the widest range. So as I say, you are going to learn and discover new things by playing with your settings. If I want the best possible images, I am going to decrease my range. And sometimes I will go to 55 feet, 60 feet, and it's going to give me a clearer picture. And you'll notice though that at 60 feet, this is 40 plus feet deep. So I'm not seeing a lot of structure. So in deeper water, you do have to increase the range to give you a wider perspective. Side imaging side, right now is currently on both. There is right side only to get more detail, and there is left side only. So if you're running along a shoreline and you are wanting to scan out to the left, you might just say, hey, I can't really see anything on the shoreline anyways, so I'm going to just choose left. But I generally always leave mine on both. Chart speed. Once again, we're gonna play. So there's 10, so it's scrolling by quicker. And if I go the other extreme, it's going at one, and you can see that it's barely moving. So keep in mind, side imaging is going to give you your best pictures while moving, and the general factory settings are pretty much the best. So it started at five, so let's leave it at five. I like the images. You can already see that the images have cleared up at five. So, you know, that is a good place to start. And as I said earlier, I don't change too much. Color palettes. So this is your SI colors. And the factory setting is two. I do prefer four. I, I, I like it with Mega 360. It's just... A good image to my eye that doesn't mean that for somebody else some people will say different colors show fish better and that is just something that you have to play with so let's take a look let's go to color palette three two and that is the factory settings there one now I've heard some people say that they do quite like the blue and it does show some contrast, and some people say that it shows fish quite well. Let's go the other way, and there's four again. There's my preferred one. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12, and that's it. So I am going to go back to my preferred, which is four. And as I say, for you, it might be quite different. Next one is dynamic contrast. It is off and now it is on. And yep, there's a lot of contrast in the shadows there for sure. And you can see the rocks quite clear. You can also see some of the hard bottom areas. So maybe for you, the dynamic contrast on is the way to go. And let's just go back to off. And I still prefer off. Down at the bottom of the Side Imaging Express menu is the iPilot controls. They are currently off. If I wanted to run my iPilot Link trolling motor here, I could turn these on. And that means that now, if you look over here, I can basically turn my prop on, I can steer, and I can use all the features of the iPilot Link control system. I leave the iPilot off on my side imaging as I like to maximize the surface area with the side imaging as opposed to a control panel for the iPilot system. Just a quick final reminder that when you are done in simulation mode, you do need to go back to normal mode to take full advantage of all the operating features and not get stuck in simulation. So once again, there's the menu message and you'll see normal and just hit the right cursor and then you can press exit to continue and you are back in your normal mode and no simulation. Well, that's a wrap on side imaging. And as I say, side imaging is clearly one of my favorite and most useful tools, but with any form of electronics and technology, there's so much information available, but you've got to take advantage of it and use it. If you buy side imaging and you never use it, you're never really going to truly discover the amazing potential of what it can show you underneath the water. And it will truly become your underwater eyes. And once you start cashing in on some of the bountiful numbers of fish in offshore structures, you are going to be certainly glad that you did. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video or found it helpful, a like, share, subscribe is always appreciated. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.